Hey, what's going on guys? Got a knife review for you today. And today we're looking at an OTF. Well, not a traditional OTF. This is actually an assisted OTF. This knife is put out by uh, Schrade. The model number is SCHOTF8TB. Now, that seems like a, a lot to handle. <laughs> and people ask, uh, you know, often about the Schrade things, you know, why, why not just come up with names for them? This one actually does have a name. This is the Viper. It's one of the uh, newer generations of the Viper. But the code, you know, the actual model number, it all stands for something. SCH stands for Schrade, OTF for out the front, which is the uh, type of knife. Um, the T is for Tanto, and the B is for black because of the blade style. This does come in uh, other blade shapes. There is a, um, a spear point uh, style blade. I believe it comes in plain edge or uh, serrated or, you know, combo. So, you know, everything means something. It's not just random. But anyway, uh, very interesting design. I do like this one uh, over the older Viper models. I have not owned the other ones. I did handle uh, one of the first generation ones, though, at a uh, gun show. And uh, although it was cool, it didn't really, you know, take my interest all that much. However, this one did. Even though it's kind of big and blocky, uh, I do like the design. Uh, it has aluminum uh, handle scales on here. And you can see it's kind of like these angled scallops, all right? And it does facilitate some grip. Um, off the top of my head, when I first got it in hand, it reminded me of like the uh, Benchmade Presidio, if you're familiar with that particular knife. Same style of like, uh, you know, grip texture. Uh, it is on both sides. It does work. It's very functional. Okay, so it's, uh, you know, pretty grippy in the hand. So how this works um, is it is an assisted OTF, okay? Now this really skates around some, some legal uh, aspects of uh, owning an automatic knife. This is not considered an automatic knife in any sense of the word, um, simply because of the fact that our blade, okay, this is an extension to our blade. This is connected to our blade. It's part of the same metal, okay? And when you uh, open this knife, you're pushing this forward, but you're actually moving the blade forward. Okay, and when it gets to a certain point, the spring hits, and there you go. So to the untrained eye, this is uh, an automatic knife. You know, you just push the button, and there you go. But um, to the knife people, we know a little bit better. We know, uh, you know, that technically, that is not an automatic knife. <laughs> this is, it has to be the closest thing possible to an automatic knife without actually being an automatic knife. Okay, so, um, you know, very interesting uh, thing that Stray did here. Now that, that all being said, from a legal standpoint, it's not an automatic knife. However, if you walk around with this in a place, a state, country, town, whatever, that automatic knives are not permitted, and you are stopped for some reason by a police officer, and they take this out, and they, they figure out how to use this, and they happen to open it, they're gonna think it's an automatic knife. You know, police aren't trained about you know knife things you know if it's considered a threat to them or if they think it's illegal they're allowed to take it from you it doesn't matter whether they're right or wrong that's way later in court you know what i'm saying so just keep that in mind uh it's not a terribly expensive knife these come in at about 40 bucks for pretty much all the uh designs all the otfs are around the 40 dollar uh range which is pretty cool way more affordable than a lot of the other otfs uh they're out there on the market but yeah from a legal aspect um totally fine to own totally fine to carry but don't be surprised if in certain situations it's taken away from you even though it's legal okay so just you know very important little note there but yeah technically it is legal because it's not considered an automatic knife you are actually moving the blade okay before that spring hits now you can use this like a traditional assistant knife you could push down on this too and that will open as well okay but obviously that's not what you want to do you want to use this button Okay, so on the side here, you can see there is a safety, safety switch. Very simple, very straightforward. Once you see the red, the safety is off. If you don't see it, the safety's on. Okay, so in the pocket, it's not going to accidentally open on you. Okay, um, so once you take the safety off, you're going to pop the blade open. Okay, it's a very crisp, very strong uh, spring in here. Okay, let me show you that again. Super fast, super crisp. There is a little blade play inherently. There has to be with these types of knives because it has to run on this track. If it was super, super tight, it wouldn't function as properly, you know, or it would be rubbing on something and not as fast. Um, it's acceptable blade play. There's definitely uh, side to side. The front to back is very minimal. Okay, like I said, on most OTFs, even the four, five, six hundred dollar uh, and on up range of uh, OTFs, you're going to find a tiny bit of play. Um, but yeah, definitely acceptable considering the price and you know the design here. 
Uh, to release the blade, there's this separate lever right here. You're gonna push that up, okay? And that just basically unlocks it so you can bring it down. There is spring tension, okay? So as you're coming down, you don't wanna let go. It's just gonna open up again. So unlock it, slide it all the way down. Okay, there is scalloping on here. So it is easy to access that, all right? Very easy to grab that with your finger. You can use this uh, with one hand. Just takes a little bit of practice. Once it's open, you're gonna unlock the blade, okay? And you're gonna basically push this knife all the way up in your fingers so that your thumb has enough room to pull that all the way down and uh, clicked, okay? So again, let's say you take this out of your pocket, take the safety off, open it up. You can use it, unlock it, put the knife all the way up in your grip and put the safety back on. So you can use this with one hand. It doesn't take a whole lot of practice to get that down. Um, downsides to this knife. Um, and this is something, again, you're not gonna realize, maybe, well maybe, you know, people are smarter than me and they might have thought of this before I realized it. Um, but with use, I carry this for about four days. That's how long my EDC. Now for only four days, all right, cause I just kinda wanna see how it's gonna carry. Um, I found that there was already lint in here, okay? Inherently because this is a side opening, uh, in other words, it's not opening from the side, but it, the, the side of the blade, or side of the knife rather, is open to the elements, okay? You are going to get lint and crap and all kinds of stuff in there, all right? You can see uh, our mechanisms obviously on the inside. You don't want that packed in with dirt and pocket lint and stuff. Um, I have to make the safe assumption that if you carry this and you did not clean it, that at some point there's going to be so much crap and dirt and stuff inside there that it's not going to function properly. Either it's not going to open up all the way or it's not going to close properly. Something's going to get in the way. Okay, so by design, you do have the chance of that malfunctioning if you don't keep it clean. Okay, so if this is something you want to buy and carry and use all the time, make sure you uh, get in there and, you know, get some either compressed air or just blow in there real hard and make sure you clean it out, okay, very thoroughly. Again, only four days in the pocket and I had some pocket lint built up. Um, didn't, you know, the, 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 the knife functioned perfectly fine. It didn't uh, cause any kind of problems, but I definitely saw the, the possibility of problems in the future if I continue to carry that for a long period of time. As far as some, uh, some specs here, uh, our blade is the Tanto version in this particular case. There is, like I said, a spear point version. It's 3.35 inches of AUS-8. This did come really sharp. It's actually pretty surprised. Um, it's starting to dull now with a little bit of use, but you know, AUS-8, it, I mean, for the most part, a lot of you guys are familiar with that. Uh, it is easy to sharpen. That is the pro, but it is a, a somewhat softer steel, so won't hold an edge forever. That's uh, to be expected. Again, talking about $40 price range here for this knife. So if you did want to get this above the novelty factor, because I think 90% of the people buying this type of knife, they're getting it because it's cool. And for the novelty of it being like a, an automatic style knife, uh, as opposed to people who are going to just buy this and EDC it just because that's what they feel their best choice is. Um, but if you did, you know, plan to actually use this knife, it is very capable and very usable, okay? Just like any other AUS-8 um, to be expected, that kind of performance. Uh, 5.5 inches closed. Again, that is a, an aluminum handle. Um, it's not very heavy, even though it, it looks kind of big and chunky. Um, it's only five ounces, actually just a, a hair under five ounces on my scale, like 4.99 or something like that, 4.98. So something else about this knife is that it is a, a lot of handle to blade ratio. Okay, you can see the size of the blade here compared to the handle. Um, you know, it's, I prefer the more proportionate uh, autos, you know, as far as just looks. This is completely about aesthetics and just how it looks good or, or not good in my opinion. And if you have a whole lot of handle and just a shorter blade, it doesn't look as good as if you have more of a one-to-one -one ratio. Not a huge deal. Another thing is that it is off-centered by design. Some OTFs have to be this way because of the, the mechanisms inside. That's how this one happens to be. Some are actually centered, just depends on the uh, internal design of it. Um, this does have a uh, glass breaker on the pommel. Okay, which acts as your screw for your thumb, uh, your uh, pocket clip here. Pocket clip does work fine. Um, I found it to be a little aggressive again with this uh, this pattern on the handle in the pocket. Uh, grips a little bit extra, you know, compared to some other knives out there. But the tension is totally fine. Okay, so it's not too hard. In other words, if this was a stiffer clip, it would be a problem in my opinion. But it's not the combination here of a heavy texturing and uh, a little bit of a, a weaker type uh, clip actually works well. Okay, holds in the pocket very nicely. But again, that's how it's being held down. And that is your glass breaker or force multiplier. Just depends on, 
you know, how you see it really. There's obviously a lot of novelty here. This is mostly novelty, but for the skeptical people out there say, yeah, who wants to buy a toy knife? It's not a toy knife. This is a, a very capable knife. It's a super fast, you know, OTF style knife. Um, an AUS-8 is still a decent steel. It's just because of the blade design, it's a little bit chunky here for the width, in my opinion. So what you get is not quite a lean edge. Although it does come very sharp when you're slicing, it's not nearly as capable as lots of other designs uh, out there. Again, you get that little bit of a wedge effect. Okay, the thinner the uh, blade stock is, the literally the thinner your edge is gonna be. Okay, so although it's sharp, uh, it's a little bit on the, the short and stubby side. Um, you know, looking at it this way. So yeah, I mean, you know, it cuts stuff. It's not the best uh, EDC style knife. I wouldn't carry this every single day. Wouldn't be my choice, but it is a hell of a lot of fun to play with. I probably opened it and closed this a couple hundred times now. Uh, no issues, it never slowed down. It's not binding up, it's not breaking or anything. Uh, you know, you don't have to be gentle with this knife. I'm not gonna drop it on my table because I don't wanna scratch it, but I'm gonna drop it off to the side here on the floor. I'm sure you guys can hear that. And uh, didn't open up, the safety is off and still works just fine. It's actually a really robust knife for 40 bucks. Um, you know, it's kind of surprising. You can definitely beat this up a little bit and uh, still rely on it. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys are in the market for something along these lines, I do like the design overall compared to uh, some of the older generations of the, the Viper. There's a, a couple makeovers that's going through. I think there may be two or three of them that I've seen so far. But uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. It's not going to be everyone's uh, cup of tea. As far as the hardware here to take it apart, it is Torx. Okay, so if you really wanted to open this up and check out the mechanisms, or specifically if you wanted to open up for cleaning, if you want to be daring enough, I know some people are a little scared about opening their knives, don't be. You know, just make sure you take pictures as you're doing it so you know how to put it back together properly. Uh, but I would highly, highly recommend uh, if you're going to be carrying an EDC in this at least once a month, uh, take it apart and thoroughly clean this. Just be, again, because it has an open side. Uh, by design. Uh, and now this should be kind of obvious, but when you're using this knife, you can't get a full grip on it when you're opening it because this has to slide forward. Okay, uh, kind of like a side opening um, automatic. You don't want to get in the way of that track. Okay, so you can't grip it like this and open it. Uh, you have to keep that free and clear. Again, that should be kind of obvious, but it might not be to some people. Um, you can, of course, open it in the reverse grip as well. Just use your ring finger. Your pinky is probably not strong enough. You know, just the muscles in your pinky, but your ring finger is enough. Okay, so you can open it in reverse grip. Uh, you know, it's just pretty cool. You know, it's definitely fun to play with. Um, but the, the novelty of it and the... I wouldn't say it's not gimmicky. It, there's a novelty there, but it's not a gimmick because it is a, a very usable knife. So I do like it. Uh, as far as the other options out there, this is probably one of my favorites. So I like the uh, the new changes. Very cool uh, overall. Again, you know, a very thin line there between uh, you know a legal assisted knife that's not considered uh, automatic. But to uh, you know our law enforcement out there, they're not going to know the difference. You know, it's, and it's no offense to them. Uh, they're not trained to know the difference, uh, nor do they care. If you have a knife on you of any kind and they feel threatened by it, they're going to take it from you. And if you don't give it to them, you're going to have lots of problems. So just keep that in mind. So Anyway, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the review. If you have this knife or any of the other generations of the Viper from Schrade, please post down uh, your comments uh, and let everyone know what you think of them. Good, bad, you know, um, how long have you had it? Is there any kind of problems? You know, stuff like that. So... Hopefully you guys have an awesome day, and I will see you soon. Take care.